How do you know that an alien civilization would like to use a radio signal to communicate? Well, actually, the universe has made it so that radio is the preferred method for interstellar communication. And the reason for that is that in space there are natural sources of what we call noise, or static, which interfere with our communication systems. And uh, when that noise and static is very intense, it takes a much more powerful, a larger, more expensive telescope to create a communication link. Well, it turns out the universe is darkest and quietest at the radio wavelengths we call microwaves. We know that. The extraterrestrials will know that. It's not hard to know this. And they, like us, will exploit these frequencies for very long distance communication. Uh, all of our communications to spacecraft, for instance, are done using uh, microwave wavelengths. The transmission of television programs to people's homes from satellites are set on these same wavelengths because the you can get the signals with a small dish on your house and it doesn't take much power from the satellite to send the, uh, transmission, the television uh, programs to you. So that's why we favor searching for signals at the microwave wavelengths. Uh, first, we can detect the messages they use for their own purposes more easily there because the universe is dark and doesn't interfere. Secondly, if they are intentionally sending us signals, they will use these frequency bands because they will know that uh, that's, those are the bands where their signals will be most detectable and where we're likely to be searching. Um, now, there are some people who, uh, who say that the, the, uh, the answer to the Arecibo message might have already uh, actually uh, come back to Earth. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this. Uh, this is a formation that um, <laughs> that, uh, that appeared in 2001 uh, near a radio telescope in England, and there is a uh, there is a more detailed yeah. one here. And uh, I have also uh, this is this is some private researcher who uh, who put this. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you see, you hold that in the, in, in the camera. Let's compare that. Now that's it's really interesting <laughs> to to note that. If you if you see the the red, you see the the, the figure man. It's yeah, like yeah. a little, little yeah. gray. And what do you think of that? Is it like an homage uh, to your, or, or do you do you think it's possible that this is this could possibly be uh, the message, the answer to your <coughs> message? I think there is no chance whatsoever that this is a legitimate message. It's some kind of joke or or fun thing or maybe a, a challenge that somebody made to one another, to somebody to do. And there are reasons, two reasons for this, good reasons. One is the version of the message they have here, which I'm about to hold up here, uh, <clears throat> contains in it information that's clearly wrong, like, such as the structure of the DNA molecule and some of the other parts of this message make no sense whatsoever or are chemically impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is that, uh, as we saw in the original picture, this message appeared about 100 meters away from a radio telescope. Now, if you had come to Earth to deliver a message, you would have gone to the door of the radio telescope and knocked on the door and given them a, one of your books or something. You wouldn't go, have gone out in a cornfield and spent a great deal of effort cutting down stalks of corn. Right, but how do you know? I mean, you know, how do you know how the aliens think, you know? Well, I, I, what I do know is that they're intelligent. Yeah. Because they somehow got to Earth, if this is really from an alien. And they will know better than to try to communicate with humans in this ridiculous way.